Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is six o'clock on Saturday, and we are live. Hey. And it's a special show today. We don't, as you know, we don't normally uh, stream on a Saturday. We have Matt Chellen from America on. We've got another American <laughs> from America <laughs> with his with his pretend beard, which is what I've just uh, tweeted out, and he, I don't think he's very Ooh. happy about that. Groomed. <laughs> his groomed beard, groomed beard. Unfortunately, Matt does not have a camera, or or is too shy to come on camera. So we're we're perfectly uh, perfectly happy to to just have his opinions on here. Um, so yes, as always, I just give you a quick warning. We do swear on this show. If you are offended, please close the browser now. Don't watch, um, and we'll move on. So Matt, give us a quick introduction. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? So um. I was a game dev for a while. I had been trying since like the age of 12 every year or so I'd pick up uh, um, some sort of book or something and just try to learn how to program and almost every time I'd fall flat on my face like one of the times that I tried I tried to make a game with Apple script because it looked easy and <laughs> I quickly learned that you can't do that. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> and um uh, about the time I graduated high school, I um, found I found um, Game Maker, and I picked up that, and I finally was able to make something with it. And I'm sitting here like, okay, this is great, but I don't really like the workflow of it very much. I don't like this whole having to drag on the script thing and then mm. put in code, and then so I picked up um, Action Script, and I was pretty successful with it. <laughs> and I made a few little crappy games with. Game Maker and Action Script. I did Ludum Dare for a while. And then um, Hakes kind of got big and what? recognized. Sorry? Hakes. Hex. Yeah. Hex, whatever. How do oh, you pronounce right, it? Right. Sorry. It's pronounced Hex, yeah, but. <laughs> um, I call it Hakes because if you say Hex, nobody's going to think the programming language. But, anyways, Hex it <laughs> finally hit it big. And um, since it was similar to Action Script, I um, picked it up and started making a game, and I Towerfall was just coming out around then, and what I made was very similar to Towerfall on a like fundamental level. Mm. But um, is this what, the my wizard own... wizard battle yeah. thing? I think yeah. I, I was just looking at it on your website actually. It's it, again, you're right. Yeah, it's a battler, isn't it? It's a brawler, and uh, it looked quite interesting to me. And. Um, I got a lot of criticism for that because it was very similar to Towerfall, but I had actually watched one trailer on Kotaku and paid half attention to it. I had no idea what it was at the end of the trailer because mm. I was just like, oh, hey, this looks cool. Click on it. And um, so a month later, I started making this game and it started forming. And my only two goals were I want to make a platformer because I've never done that successfully and everyone else has. Yeah. And I want to make a game that would feel at home on the Winitron. Like, I specifically wanted to make a game that would feel at home on the Winitron. And okay. what came out of it was Wizfight. And then... So, well, sorry, what's, what's, what's the Winitron? You've got to excuse my ignorance here. It's not something I've come um, across before. It's an indie arcade cabinet that started in Canada. I don't remember who started it. It was either, like, right. um, Noel Berry or Alec um, What's-His-Face from Aquaria. One of them... I think. Anyways, um, so that I developed for about a year, and then I was on Twitter one day, and I decided to um, take up an offer for writing for Regret Zero, and so I started balancing my time and having some Regret Zero stuff going on. And about six months later, I went from being mildly OCD to seriously OCD to the point that I needed to see a therapist and everything and right. another day another game kind of fell apart it just on top of the OCD stress I couldn't do all that writing comes naturally to me I was already playing games to de-stress but I couldn't take the stress of making a game on top of that so right. that's kind of what it happened is, there it is a very stressful experience I mean I've been I've been developing my game for around around about two years it's very different from your approach i've i've kind of approached it as right i'm going to do the programming and the game design and then i'm going to farm the art out and i'm going to get other people to help me with the art side of things but i'm going for like a first person shooter type no it's not a shooter but first person type game and it's it's a lot of work you know and i i've come from the background of 
no experience whatsoever in game development. Um, I didn't even I didn't use Action Script, Apple, you know, script anything like that. I just went straight into Unity and started trying to learn. So in those two years, I'd learned to be a game dev, a, an art design, and uh, sorry, an art director. You know, and uh, it's 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 a lot of stress. I'm sure I'm losing some hair from it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, yeah. I worked, um, I worked with a a musician, not a musician, a composer for a while that was making the music for Wiz Fight, and we very much had issues getting in touch with each other because he lives in Australia. He had a busy life and um, I wasn't able to pay him at the time, mm. but um, he did very good work and he was very happy to do it when he had time. And um, other than that, I had my girlfriend graciously offered to fix up some of the art in Wiz Fight. The wizards were terrible before she did the work on it. <laughs> she made more of them. And um, so, um, other than that, I didn't really have any collaborators. I am very awful at working on teams, and Regret Zero has been great for that because it was the first positive team experience I'd had. Right. I had written for, I don't know if you've heard of it, Indie Function. I wrote, I wrote for their magazine for a while, but I mean, just that was my first experience working for like a teenage boss, essentially, and right. it was awful. Let me yeah. just put it that way. It was a mess. It, it was a very huge mess. And um, it seems like the boss there is finally turning himself around because I see it come up every now and then, but oh, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I again, I remember looking back in my, my old gaming days. I ran a clan when I was I was very young. And uh, and Lou Lou was actually mem a member of that clan. He came into it quite late, but he ended up being the second second in command. But I was I was very young, and I made some, um, let's say I, I don't know. I made some decisions that I, I don't exactly regret because I learned from them. But there were bad decisions at the time, let's say. And uh, I got very very stressed and very you know I didn't really understand how to manage people, especially the adults that were in the team as well, because there was adult gamers there as well. You know, it's the same kind of thing. As a kid, you don't really get it. You don't really get the real world comes above what you're doing. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm sure it's the same for for your teenage uh, uh, team leader. Yeah. And so you're also well, you also write game you write write game reviews and things like that as well. Yep. And um, I was at Regret Zero for a while, but um, about last winter, the future started hanging in the balance, and I was offered a paid job at Game Walkers, and I'm just like, well, there's money here. I need money. I'm in college still. I need all the money I can personally get to get through that. Hmm. So, um, Good stuff. And it's actually been a very good experience working for game walkers on top of being a paid job the um the owner is very active and he constantly takes feature requests and works on the site as much as he can and i am so grateful to him because i have put him on the spot so many times with um feature requests in the past three months that i've been working there <laughs> yeah so so no, i mean so you're you're when you say working there do you work in an office with them or do you work remotely and write for remotely. them remotely right um they he lives on the other side of the country so right yeah yeah i mean it's it's a much more remote culture anyway in america than, than in england i mean a lot of people would expect you to be in an office uh, if you no matter where you live in england even though some places are hundreds of miles away it's just uh, just how it works unfortunately yeah um so yes um i just just say hello to the few people that are watching in chat in uh, in twitch i don't know if twitch is playing up today by the way it's uh it, it has been a bit flaky so, over the yes, last few I mean. weeks um but if you if you're having problems on twitch and you can see me go to our hitbox uh, channel which is hitbox.tv forward slash resonance arcade and uh you can watch us in there as well that's where we're streaming on both now so yeah um let's move let's move swiftly on i shall uh we'll, we'll ask you a few questions about your uh, your experiences, etc. You just actually answered quite a lot of the ones I was going to ask you, as in, <laughs> as in what your experiences, where you came from. Um, so you're saying now your game dev, your kind of game dev days are over, or are you still maybe pursuing that as a part time thing or a hobby? I, I've been um, building up a bunch of ideas in my head for games, and when I can finally come to the point where I feel comfortable working on it again, I'm going to go back to it. It's not a permanent thing, it's just. Mm. I'm still working through the OCD. I have two jobs now. I have classes, and um, I, while my actual 
limits aren't um, set by the Game Walker's employer. Um, I set pretty high standards for myself because yeah. I want to put that forth. I want to have people see that side of me. So, well, it's, that's, that's it's very rough. It's admirable, you know. I mean, you know, pro problems aside, it's admirable you have a good work ethic, and you obviously do hold you know high standards to yourself and said game dev to me is it's a it's an art at the same time as being a hobby i'm i i approach it like a business but it's very much relaxed you know i i know that what i'm doing at the moment is going to take me forever to do but i'm i'm happy with that you know i'm not gonna i don't really care what the criticism comes in online from it at the end of the day i'm sure i will when i start to get some <laughs> it'll be a very different matter there but i also i also have a you know kind of a uh, a barrier that I can put up in front of that, you know, and uh, fend people off. I think, uh, but I, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate that it's probably a bit difficult if you if you're getting lots of haters, you know, for, for no real good yeah. reason. So yeah, um, I'll I'll let Lou start off with a quick question if he's got anything. Well, I think we should ask this question to all our guests. I think we've asked it to the previous two, but what's your favourite game of all time? Oh. <laughs> God, I hate that because I have I have favorite games of different genres and I've had games that I will continuously go back to like I am I know everybody hates the 3D platformer. Everybody hates it cuz no one can get the cameras right and it's always just an awful experience all around for most people. But um every so many years even now I still go back to Banjo-Tooie. It's Really? Like yeah. I've, it's I've... like it's, 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 so your Banjo Two is the 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 second is one, isn't it, from Banjo and Kazooie series? Yeah, and yeah. That's on I the think SNES, it has more it? personality. Oh, so it was <laughs> on the sixty for the N sixty four, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I I played the first one to death, and I loved it back when I was a kid. I haven't played the second one, so I don't know how different it is. What's the what's the main the difference with him? The second one, it kind of flowed through the world a lot more. Um, you have that little like Grunty's castle that you walk through and it's themed for everything in the first one but in the second one they have a real world that you walk through and it's always it feels kind of mm -hmm. seamless going from the open world to like the fair or whatever and um, a lot of the characters have more personality they they seem to have taken a lot of what they learned from the first one and and put it into that and be, I don't know how as a kid I beat the um, oh what was it the cloud world because I was playing that like last year and I'm sitting here like some of these challenges are damn near impossible how did I do this yeah yeah but, uh, I, I remember it being very difficult the first one and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it I said it was a uh, I've still got it downstairs actually I've, I've got a, a retro collection a retro console collection myself and I don't get on it that often but you know I do enjoy uh, do enjoy playing them so that's, that's yeah. a really interesting favorite game because most people come that we get on the show come out with something like Deus Ex or the Final yeah, Fantasy Seven standard big yeah. games, aren't they? And and that oh. is that's something that yeah, it was a big game when it came out, but it, it it certainly hasn't stuck in my memory as a as a everlasting game. But you play a lot of games, don't you? I mean, you're, you're yeah, you do do play a lot, so it's really interesting, really interesting. So would you so. say that 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 was your favorite genre as well? Then the the three D platformer. Yeah, probably. It's when they're done right. I think they're better than two D platformers, but they don't get done right a whole lot. <laughs> I said I'm, I was a, a since um, Mario. You probably have an opinion on this, but um, uh, Mario sixty four. I was a big fan of that when that first came out. Obviously, because it was one of the first three D platformers that I had access to personally, and I, I just loved all of the. I love the control that you could have over the character. I couldn't believe that you could run around in a world, you know, and it was like almost like real life, <laughs> and it wasn't anything like real. How many people <laughs> do handstands on the top of trees, you know, and backflips through mirrors? It was um, there was a game on the PlayStation called um, Jumping Flash, that rings which bells. was a which was a fantastic first person 3D platformer, if you can imagine that. And yeah. you, you could do like these super jumps and jump miles up above the um, each 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 like level was kind of a floating island, right. and you had to collect certain things and then get to the end of the level. But it was that was amazing, and I'd love to play that on the Oculus Rift. It had a real sense of oh my god, I'm flying miles above this <laughs> this level, but I'm falling. Ah! I'm not sure it's I'd a, love to play it. I have to be honest. It is very, it's a very good game. It's a very very good game. It's got very kind of. Uh, flat shaded graphics very very simplistic graphics but it, it it's it's a great one and that's actually one of the few 3d platformers i've enjoyed 
when I think about it. And again, yeah. that's probably because it's first person. I do tend to have this thing about first person over third person. You I have, though. You, you always game. have. I mm. always, I always used to prefer playing first person games. Sorry, first person games with mouse and keyboard, and third person on control pads. But these days, I've been playing quite a lot of third person on mouse and keyboard as well, and actually preferring that because you get more control over the camera. As you said, Matt, it's difficult to get the camera right, but some of them, some of them are, are good enough, I think. And I, I quite and like the over the shoulder cameras, like the Gears of War series. You know the. Yes, Gears of War is another big favorite. Really? Right. Yeah. Again, I've, I've I, heard a lot of people criticize that. I, I really like Gears of War. I, I've heard a lot of people criticize it, and I know a lot of people criticize the cover aspect of it, but I mean, I, I even played Kane and Lynch and loved the first one to death, and that's got the cover shooting mechanics. I hated Kane and Lynch the first <laughs> one. I literally I played it for a couple of hours, and then I put it down and didn't play it for a few months, and then I thought, I want to give that a go again, because I don't think I gave it enough of my attention. And I played it, and it I just thought it was awful. I just thought the story uh, was yeah. horrific, it, and the, the control system... Oh, the system. story's horrific, it, but... um. And um, I played it on keyboard first, and then I played the Xbox version. And I'm sitting here like these controls are awful on the Xbox controller. They're just terrible. The cover system was realistic to a fault, where if a piece of the column broke off, they could hit you in that tiny little thing. But <laughs> just somehow they'd get you every single time. And um, yeah, it was pretty bad in a lot of regards, but I, I liked it despite that. I have no idea why. I have a really weird taste in games, if, yeah. if you can't tell. Well, but, um, it's nice to have a different opinion because we, we tend to talk about the same games on here quite a lot. And, and uh, actually, <laughs> in regards to the first and third person thing debate, I had never actually thought that a first person game could get mobility right because they never have. It's always been awkward. And then I played Dying Light. And Dying Light is so incredibly immersive. And I know it's a big game right now, but it, it really did get it right for a lot of in a lot of regards. The story was terrible. The ending <laughs> was terrible. But... The mobility was one of the best. It's on my list of to get uh, at the moment. Yeah. And it, it's saying what you were saying about, um, uh, oh my God, that brawler that came out at the same time as your your wizard game. What's it called? Towerfall. Towerfall. Towerfall, that was it. We were playing that actually a few weeks ago at a LAN party and uh, thoroughly enjoying ourselves playing it. But um, yeah, Towerfall came out a similar time to that. I have had the same thing with my game. I've, I've put together a combination of mechanics that I thought was unique. And since then, loads of games have started doing the same kind of stuff, and it's like, am I just, am I, am I? I, I think I, you're just I, hypersensitive to that sort of may, thing happening. That, that might be the case, actually. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying not to take it as a, I'm taking it all as an experience, you know. I'm trying not to take it as a, oh god, why should I even try to release this game now? You know, it's, it's all about the <laughs> kind of the attitude and the way you look at it. I think. Yeah, and one of the things you have to realize is this far into indie game development being a huge thing, and this far into tools getting to the point where they're um, really, really easy to use. You have to um, you just have to take it in stride. Somebody's mm. going to have done something similar or the same thing. You just have to do it better. That, that's what it's all about. Oh, yeah. Or just have to be lucky or, or have to do, get your marketing or your PR right, you know. And unfortunately, that does take up a lot of time if you want to be successful at it. Um, it's a shame because I, I wish you could, I wish as an indie developer you could plow as much time as you could into the creativity and then it would work on its own merits you know i'm not saying my game's going to be brilliant i'm just saying that it'd be nice if the good games were big because they were good not because they had good marketing budgets Chris, you know you should say that your game's gonna be brilliant it should be your 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 sole purpose in life is to make your game brilliant i i, I <laughs> i'm making a game that i want to play i want i, I mean i the, the whole story and everything I, i'm i'm so many years off having the full game written it's it's unbelievable but you know, I'm, in terms of the mechanics, I enjoy playing it. I enjoy testing it. I haven't got bored of that yet. I'm getting a bit bored of the fact that I'm still fucking developing it, you know? <laughs> I'm still <laughs> doing it. But, yeah, again, you just have to keep plowing through it and keep going. And it's it's hard work as an indie dev. There's, there's no doubt about that. I said some people have it lucky and or, not, or, or some people get in the right crowd. Some people already have the experience that I'm learning and I'm sure you were yeah. in that boat, you know? And it, like, it, oh my god um, I don't know if you follow Kale on Twitter um, I did but he blocked me um, <laughs> he, he, anyways I, <laughs> a couple of months a couple of months back six months or so he, uh, I said something like um, 
I think I retweeted one of his tweets and I said that he, he I love this guy he's always negative about stuff or whatever it was I can't remember I can't remember exactly what it was but he blocked me because he didn't like the tone of the tone I said it in and I wasn't being horrible <laughs> and I you know I'm like right fair enough you know <laughs> he's the only person who's ever blocked me on Twitter so I'm I'm quite uh, quite chuffed with that <laughs> anyways um, yeah. well he goes on a lot about what any dev should look at and looking back on my project and him going on about you need to spend it like it is a bit your time like it is a business and you need to budget like you value your time at this spend this much time on it i used to spend eight to ten hours a day for weeks over when i could on my game and that is i am never going to make that back if i value my time anywhere close to minimum wage <laughs> yeah well I, I, in in context, I I am a fairly successful software developer. I you know I earn a decent wage doing what I do during the week. Um, but the problem is, is indie dev is my hobby, and when I'm not doing my main job during the week, you know I'm a contractor, so I don't always have work on. I I am indie devving constantly. If I valued my if I valued my time, I, I, I this game would be in the thousands hundreds of thousands by now because the amount of time that i've spent on it some days i work 18 20 hours you know some days i work two hours or not at all you know it's when it's whatever i feel like but i don't burn myself out with it either bearing in mind that i'm not a full-time indie dev and i'm not full-time relying on it to make money so i'm in a very different situation from a lot of people who maybe need to get a game out in order to start making some revenue you know so yeah. my my opinion is different i think Anyway, ask you another question quickly. Um, that wasn't You're asking one of the one of the creepy ones, Chris. Yeah, I like asking the creepy ones because <laughs> you know, people oh, people are, are a bit funny with them. Uh, hello, potato. By the way, in chat, just uh, another a few people. Twitch guys, I out. miss you so much. I wish I could join you, but I can't because Twitch won't let me in. Oh, this is, yeah. um, there's there's so there's not too much going on. We've had a we've had a, a few people with questionable names in the chat so far today, but. Um, Right, okay, let's go for a, a, a bit of a weird one. <laughs> <clears throat> right, okay, this, uh, this is not that weird, but how, on average, how many hours a day do you spend on the internet? I would like not to answer that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> um, uh, probably five to seven. I spend a right. lot of time looking for games to cover and then spend a lot of time actually trying to cover those games and as mostly a single person working on games I, I feel awful when I can't get stuff done but I do my best I mean there's a lot out there and I try to highlight what I can yeah. so I spent a lot of time on the internet trying to find them that doesn't sound like a lot of time to me I have it to be honest with you same with me uh, that we you're in you're in good company here if you think that's a lot of time <laughs> I said my life is pretty much the internet you know I'm, I'm if I'm not working and on the internet I'm I'm game devin on the internet so I'm I'm always doing something um right okay let's so let's move on to your projects then now you're another day another game thing you say that you're you're it's on the hold but how many games did you do with with that particular project when you, when uh, you were doing it i think like five small little projects and then i was working on was fight um over the course of a year i tried to get it on wii u but that didn't work out because dev kit costs are insane yeah that's and, a problem um, isn't it with any of the big platforms that... i had yeah it is a big problem and i had a perfect perfect plan lined out so that if i had um been able to pull it off it would have worked but I, I really doubt it would have been able to pull it off but i was gonna work on it rebuild it in unity over the course of two or three months go to kickstarter and uh, i i can't actually talk about why i'm doing it like this because of ndas yeah, but yeah. um i was gonna do three months redev take the Unity version that looked all nice and had the special particle effects and everything and put it on Kickstarter and by the end of the Kickstarter, if I had the money for the dev kit, I was going to um, go ahead with the Wii U thing. But um, that didn't work out because of OCD, so... Okay. Fair enough. And in terms of the projects you have worked on then, which one are you most proud of? Which one were you most happy with? I know you said that you're, very, you're a perfectionist, but there must be one that stands out. Um, probably was fight even unfinished. I just I was very happy with where it was going. It was nuanced in a way that was different. Like it was more about trying to use what you had 
to avoid things, and I spent a lot of time testing it. I made sure that when you jumped, if you jumped in specific way, you could dodge over all the bullets just by jumping. Yeah. And it was it, it was different, and I kind of liked that. And people kind of it was impossible to get people to pick up on it, though. <laughs> there's a, the, the thing the thing about that is though, there's it's good when a developer puts that much effort into a particular type of control system. You know, as you said, being able to jump over all the bullets, making sure that you've got all your uh, uh, collider heights in the right place. But the it, me and Lou appreciate a game where we have to hone our skills to play yeah. it well we come from a quake kind of background and and again i don't know if you've played much quake or not we were we were in the we were kind of in in the quake 2 community uh, very very heavily and we used to play every night you know we played clan games and all the other stuff and um you had to you had to be good at that you had to know how to do all the circle jumps and the the bunny hopping and the <clears throat> you know understand how the uh, how how much health would be taken and an armor would be taken off if you did a grenade jump or a rocket jump in order to get away if yeah. you're in a sticky situation that kind of stuff is interesting to us and it's nice to hear you say that that you put that much effort in yeah, we, do have, and, uh, we have a special place in our heart for for movement in games i think or, or physics in games i like to i love the idea that there is a that, that there are systems in games, there are physical systems in games that can be learnt and that can be slightly esoteric and can be twisted and bent. It's kind of like the Matrix, really, isn't it? It's like kind of there are rules, but these rules can be bent and broken. I do yeah. like that in games. Even if they're not intended. If they're, you know, yeah, like, like, especially if they're unintended. Yeah. <laughs> you love immers um, immersive uh, gameplay, though, don't you? Mm. Yeah, but I wasn't big on Quake when it first came out. I played Quake Live when that came out, and I tried the demo for Quake 3 Arena back when it first came out on Mac. But um, I wasn't big on the earlier Quakes. I tried some game... Oh, what was it called? That one that's entirely based on bunny hopping. Warsaw. Warsaw, yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah, I tried that, and um, I was awful at it. Just watching <laughs> everybody bounce around perfectly, and I'm sitting here like... What, what am I doing? <laughs> this is, a, is an anecdote for you. We played a, we had a LAN party a few weeks ago, I've mentioned already, but we um, we, we had a game of Quake 2, uh, a duel, and we, we, we set the tournament up and we, you know, 3, 2, 1, go. And then we were like, our, we always had this kind of weird competitiveness between us, me and Lou, and Lou destroyed me because since I used to play Quake 2, I've changed how I play um, first-person shooters. I used to strafe with my mouse buttons. I used to left and right strafe with my mouse buttons, which I don't think anybody else on the planet does. <laughs> but I learned how to bunny hop using that technique. Whereas L Lou, uh, th now I strafe with a W. You know, w I use a WASD config like everybody else on the planet. And although, apart from Lou, in fact, and <laughs> and, uh, and I, I can't. I just couldn't do it. I just could not bunny hop. I couldn't figure out. In my head, it was like, what? How? No. And I was jumping with space. Previously, I used to jump with A and fire with D as well. So it was, it, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm the only person on the planet that did that. But So yeah, when I, when I played it, I just literally, it just owned me, I think, 20 nil or something, wasn't it? I think I might have killed you once, maybe. But it was, it was depressing playing that. That's um, like... Um uh, we we started the Indie Outliers thing, and my girlfriend does co-hosting with me for that. Mm. And I have never learned how much I had, I had never learned how much better she is at gaming, just picking it up and playing it immediately than I am until we started doing that. <laughs> I say, hey, it's interesting. I, I, I'm these guys have been watching me play Metal Gear Solid uh, all the C, the series all the way through, and they they hate me for it because I'm. <laughs> Because I'm terrible at it, I have to be honest, and I didn't realise how terrible I was at games until some until I started streaming and realising that I do I reload games. I'm a bit of a save scummer. <laughs> I reload games every five seconds. Oh, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> if I, I mean, screw one thing up, I'm gonna reload it and be like, I could have done this better. I got I gotta well, do it better, and then I'll screw up five seconds down the line and go all the way back. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 your OCD. I've, I, I said I don't suffer from OCD in real life, but in games, I have to get it exactly as I wanted to get it. Deus Ex is a great example of that. You know, I'm, I'm a quick save whore in that. I'll be I'll quick save, and if I get seen or or don't do it exactly as I want to, I'll reset and now it's even worse with achievements as well now achievements are in games if if you want to try and get an achievement you can re retry something a million times until you get it can't you but 
this is again another reason I kind of like roguelikes now because I'm forced into a certain way of playing the game you know you've got one life or yeah. you've got one way of do you know you've got one chance um just trying to get through FTL not understanding how the systems work the first I don't know 20 or 30 times just just getting destroyed by everything because I didn't know that I had to conserve scrap you know or, or, or whatever I needed to do with it <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, so you you um you asked a you said that you you had a little bit of outside help with with um uh, with your another day another game stuff. Was it just yeah, the just, just the audio? Just the composer and what um my girlfriend did for um pixel art because she is significantly better at it than I am. Did you did you do your own pixel art before that? And was that I mean, yes, how, it was how awful. bad was it? Programmer art. <laughs> it was yeah, it was programmer art. You can see it like all over my site. the The header was something I threw together because I was just like, I need something up there, and it's just it's awful. Yeah. I know it's awful. <laughs> but I'm, I said you you again you're in good company. Well, actually no, you're in good company with me. Lou is actually a, a fairly talented artist. I'm I'm you you, you should see some of the stuff. Uh, paint is about. <laughs> the level of my experience and well um i learned i'm actually not bad at sketching things if i can like stare at it and like because i used to go on the game covers and like hold the box there and just draw it and i'm fairly good at that but if you try to put color in it if you try to get me to do anything from memory it's just like gone it's awful mm -hmm. <laughs> i said i've been trying my hand at 3d art and all kinds of stuff and basically box modeling is 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 a challenge for me and and that's the simplest way to do three any 3d stuff i'm using a, a program a, a plugin in in unity called pro builder and it you can you can basically extrude faces and you know pull pull vertexes around and kind of arrange them on a grid and it literally is a grid anything you've any of my screenshots that you you, you may have seen from twitter i've just got I've just got basically big blocks all over the place and I was hoping that I would have arty people to replace those blocks with nice pretty organic looking structures but you know it's getting there but it's it's taken a long time to explain yeah. what I want <laughs> yeah it's it's a constant battle it's a constant battle yeah I can't uh, do 3d art at all the vertex and like edge pulling and it's just I, I know that you can sit there and you can tweak it to perfection, but every single time I try, that box stays a box with, like, a little spike protruding from it in every single direction or something. It doesn't go anywhere. And then I'll sit there and I'll be like, okay, I'm finally getting this where I want, and then I can't get the vertexes to line up or something. I just don't understand how it works. There's something very interesting, and this may or may not help you, you may or may not be interested, but something very interesting I've learned recently uh, over the last six months, I'd say, about 3D art. It isn't all about the mesh. It isn't all about the way that you um, uh, the way that you form the object in the first place. What you what you the way that high poly models and the way that that AAA games do things and make things look really beautiful is they will sculpt something in a program like ZBrush or, or Mudbox or various other ones. I think they're the two main industry standard ones. They'll use that sculpture, and that sculpture will have millions of polygons in it. I mean, it'll be it'll be an artist who's doing that, you know? They'll know, they'll understand how to do that. They'll sculpt that, and then they'll bake that down into a texture and normal maps um, with all the new PBR workflow stuff that's coming in recently. Then you can you can then use those um, those maps, and you can use things like Substance Painter to, to paint on textures and paint on metallic maps and roughness maps and all the other stuff and it's all it's a humongous learning curve i've recently learned that it's not all about how the model looks that's the main thing and and <laughs> to me it's 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 out there you know i understand the high level part of it but i could never do that i'm not an artist i couldn't i could not sculpt something on a on a program i just no, it's not well, oh, sorry on a computer it's not me what is it called sculptress i think have you ever tried using that um yeah, yeah so um, i haven't used it myself but i've heard of it yeah um, I fairly successful with that actually, but um, more successful than I've ever been with any other 3D program. But the thing I learned is that you can't use any of those models for anything. You will have to go back in some other program and fix them so that the vertexes are like, or the triangles are down to what you can actually use. And I'm sitting there like, well, there goes my sense of victory. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's uh, <laughs> once you've got this high poly cage, you would that you then bake that down using 
various techniques, UV mapping and, and things like Yeah, normal maps. You bake them down into a normal map, and that normal map is just a texture, and that texture is overlaid and wrapped uh, around the mesh, and that gives the mesh, or it gives the... Um, it gives you the, know, a simplified version of the mesh. Yeah, and it gives and the, the it gives the each face normal information. So it says in this direction, this is where the light is supposed to shine off, and this is how it should look, and you know how deep it should be, and that kind of thing. I mean, the whole new PBR stuff is is a is a brand new world in itself, but it's that technique. That technique is is Unreal Engine three. I mean, Gears of War was the first big game to make use of that um, to any large degree. It was the, the Unreal Engine three. Um, kind of main attraction really yeah. was this idea that you would have these these million triangle models baked down to thousand triangle models, but it's, keep the same look of detail. It's really interesting when you start breaking the components down in the in lots of examples. Um, Algorithmics. Uh, substance painter and substance designer it's a program that you use you to you basically pull your model in your low poly model and then you can draw on all of your normal maps and all of your additional stuff and the, the the examples that they give you and that is really cool to being able to turn all the different channels off and figure out what is a normal map a whole like someone some guy's got a pocket that looks really detailed on his thing and it looks like it's a physical pocket on his on his breast and it's not it's just a normal map and it's mm. like wow <laughs> I, I didn't you know <laughs> it, it's it to someone who doesn't know that it's really interesting to learn that if you're interested in that kind of thing. But the yeah. problem is, is there's, there's so much for me at the moment to learn on the programming side of things that the art side of things is is just totally secondary to me. Um, you mentioned Ludum Dare earlier on. Yeah. We have we we've never well di Lou's done one game jam before I think is it just one Lou? yeah just the one yeah um, but we're actually going to do the next Ludum Dare and we're going to do it as a team. Uh, he's going to come over here and we're going to do it stuff because we're quite excited about working on something together and we. We've worked together before on some things, and um, I, I'm looking forward to that because it's going to be my first 2D experience. Everything I've done so far has been 3D, and uh, it's I've, I've approached it from the wrong direction, you know. So I've had to learn everything, uh, <laughs> you know, and instead of just start small and build upwards, it's it's crazy. Ludum Dare is actually great for that, and I know a lot of people are going to tell you it's not because it's um a short term thing, but um. I found that if you put yourself under pressure to get it done in that time, you'll just get it done somehow. Even if it doesn't work well, you will get it done. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm I'm quite confident we'll get something in I place. think we'll get something, yeah. I think we, both of us uh, can, can put um, prototypes together pretty quickly. And that's uh, what it so will be. It will definitely be a prototype. It will not be a finished article. Yeah. But I mean, that's, I that's always the case with any, any kind of live event thing like a uh, demo scene stuff and things like that except for um freaking deep night at Ludum dare every single time he comes out with this beautiful finished game and i'm sitting here like how did you do that on your own some people are just <laughs> talented at that kind of thing i mean we're going to do the the seven is it 72 hour one or is it the jam it's the, the jam, yeah, yeah friday till monday yeah because so i mean if it, yeah. well, to be fair if lou wasn't going to be up for it because we we weren't confirmed up until recently i was going to do the ludum dare on my own and just see what i come up with because you know i can't do art but I, i'll be able to throw something together surely and you never know it could be a brilliant idea it could be utterly atrocious well, but <laughs> worst case scenario kenny's been putting out a lot of assets recently to use. Oh, Kenny, yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a good lad. I've seen his, his assets in quite a few um, published games, actually. Yeah. Um, he seems, seems like a nice lad. Um, just sort of say he hello to uh, Kot Brodsky. Kot Brodsky, uh, probably something like that, Ever in, in chat. Just he said hello. <laughs> hello, something like that. Oh, whatever your name is. I'm terrible at it, and I'm sure I've done the same with the same guy before now. Um, <laughs> Right, so I think I've asked you, I mean, you, you've talked about the engines and the languages that you've used before, but at the moment, have you got a preference? Do you still use Game Maker or are you Flash still? I think every IDE slows me down. I don't know why it is, oh, really? but I will... I have always preferred Command Line Hex and um, Sublime Text 2. It's just how I work. Fair enough. Oh, you know... I, I know a few game devs like like you. I mean, um, oh, what's her name? <laughs> Dutch lass. Uh, she 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 was she actually did a keynote for one of the Ludum Dares recently, um, and I speak to her on on 
Twitch all on Twitter all the time. Anyway, she she's she's very much like that. She's into a C plus plus, and she's not. She doesn't like a, a Unity, and you know she she prefers to write her own engines. And and I can appreciate that. But at the end of the day, I kind of I don't understand all the the putting a three D engine together, even putting a two D engine together. I wouldn't know where to start making a vector on a screen. I wouldn't know where to start. Like X and Y. Well, I, I'm just, never <laughs> X and Y. I think I'm yeah. sure it's a lot more complex than that. You've got to make GI calls to the graphics card or something, surely. You know me. You know me. Well, to get that embroiled in the the metal of the the stuff. Most of the even stuff like Hex it has um has very quick ways to draw sprites onto the screen and stuff like that. So you you're generally not doing that low level stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't work with the low level stuff. I just I find an engine that I can use with it. Like I used Hexpunk, which is um a port of Flashpunk to Hex by um not Chevy Ray unfortunately but some other guy and um it actually works very well and um I'd very much prefer that over Unity or Game Maker because I got so tired I can I can learn in a language and I can just figure out how it works and how a game engine works but I hate learning the interfaces because most interfaces for IDEs I found have been awful and there's always going to be this variable or this slider that's hidden somewhere that I can't find it and I'll have to it'll mm. take me ages. I can tell you're not a very patient man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, I personally quite like Unity's workflow and the way that it sits sits together and I like the fact that I can do quite a lot of stuff in script. Most of the stuff that I've written is script based, but there's also quite a lot of visual elements to my game. So I've been you know, it's it's easier for me to use something that's got physics, that's got lighting, that's got baking, that's got the occlusion culling, all of the fancy stuff that you know, I, I may have to implement at some point. It's better if I already have that and it's done for me. Even though there are problems with it all and I again I understand that. It's just you know, it's all preference. It's nice that it's nice to to meet someone who who can make a game from nothing. You know, from from not being told what to do and not following tutorials. I suppose. I think you're making it out to sound more complex than it actually is, Chris. But okay, the, well, I'm sorry. These, I'm sorry for tools... giving him props. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. It's, it, it is. It, I, I mean, I'm I'm kind of like Matt, and I do like to work with with slightly lower level tools than, than Unity usually, and I can, can kind of see where Matt's coming from with the fact that you've got this IDE where a lot of stuff's hidden or a lot of stuff has to be done with the mouse. And it's like, oh, God, I don't want to slide over this. I just want to be able to put a number in. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but on, like, the, on the other side, I, I, you, I think that Unity does allow you to do a lot of stuff with code. You can do really everything nice. with code you if you can, really yeah, want to. Yeah, you can to. literally do everything with code. You can set nearly, your scene up and everything. then just spawn everything with with code. That's one of the things that it, the, the, the documentation and the tutorials that you see for Unity doesn't actually go into too much detail with. I've had to learn a lot off my own back or learn a lot off other people's blogs and other people's experiences. Um, but... I said I still I kind of equally bounce off both sides of things. It's my engine of choice now because I've invested so much time in it, though. So, you know, I'm kind of its bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know a lot of I know a lot of people are moving to Unreal Engine four because you can do so much without code. And I'm just sitting there like, use the code. It is always more reliable. <laughs> well, isn't it C plus plus Unreal Engine? Um, the, the, for Unreal Engine 4, they've released the source for it, yeah, so it's C++. So previous but it's got to its that, its own language. It? It's got its own script label. It's always been C++, but it's got its own script language within it. it it's a visual script language in, in Unreal Engine 4. Right. Um, but it's had, it's had Unreal Script, which is like a JavaScript style language in it in the past. I hate nothing more than visual scripting. I hate it. Just write script. If you're going to write, if you're scripting, just write bloody script, you know? I mean, yeah. It looks nice to see these finished, like, visual scripting things, but when you actually try to understand what's going on in them, I'm just sitting there like, there are too many lines. Where does this one go? They're, they're crossing over. Where where am I looking? I mean, I've got into a bit of a situation with my code base now for, for Subnet that I, it's, it's, got, it's got, it's so big and there's so many scripts that are attached to so many different physical objects in my scene that I understand that it is you know it's probably too complicated for for what it is you know it's 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 convoluted i suppose and the only reason that it's got like that i'm a i'm a um a bit of an organization hall when it comes to these things i like to make sure that i'm i'm, I'm organized I'm, my projects in the right the right thing oh we've lost matt but i shall continue to speak um so yeah, my my projects in the right kind of place it's 
Uh, I love design patterns. I love the fact that I, I can organize my code, but unfortunately, because I've been learning Unity and I've been learning the patterns and the framework inside Unity, it's it's re the, the repercussion of that is that the code base is in a big massive mess. We lost you there, Matt, for a second. I continue to talk, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. I, I was just worried that it was going to drop me. <laughs> no, no, you you're still here. Um, right, so we, we've got a contingency for that anyway, so don't worry about that too much. Um, Let's move on then. Let's move on to our uh, games that we've played this this week. I again have not played anything because I'm busy and I work twenty four hours a day pretty much. So, um, Matt, any highlights? Well, um, I I hadn't. It, it looks pretty, but I hadn't had a lot of expectations, and I can't talk too much about it because it's not out yet. But um, Finding Teddy Two has been a huge like thing that I've been talking about on Twitter because it's probably so far the best modernization of the old side-scrolling Castlevania Legend of Zelda 2 formula that I've ever seen. It's fast-paced. You can um, just sit there and jump over enemies and bounce off their heads with your sword hanging down if you <laughs> want and kill them that way. Um, it's very well balanced. There are a lot of puzzles that actually make you think, and I've been very much enamored with the game. And on top of that, it's got extremely pretty pixel art that is very well animated. Um, you can see in the trailer the big lizard thing. It's very smoothly animated, and is, it, it's really nice. Um, and I cannot wait to actually put my thoughts to paper with that one. It definitely has like a, a, a Legend of Zelda feel to it, the way what I'm looking yeah. at here. Yeah. It's got um, even like the little ocarina type thing with the music hum and you have to use that for different puzzles and you have to figure out words that you're making out of the notes and you have a lexicon that you can reference at times and it's 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 a very nice game and are, very... you, uh, are you a fan of metroid then um and those star games castlevania i have never actually finished a metroid or castlevania game and i know that's like heresy in the gaming world <laughs> but i i've never done it it's never held my attention for that long i've never played uh, sorry i've never completed a castlevania game i played the original nes or snes games i can't remember which they were on now i know they were on other consoles probably as well but back then and i've got castlevania lords of shadow downstairs which i know is not a i don't think it's 2d is it i think it's 3d that one but i've not played it <laughs> I, I, i've bought it when it came out but um Met metroid i've been a fan of metroid since the first one the first one was just totally confusing i had no idea what i was doing with it uh, the Super Metroid, I played to death and I 99%ed it. And I had every item, every single item, but I'd, I'd, I was 99% and I don't know what I'd missed. It was <laughs> gutting. The only game I think I probably ever, I'm going to say I 100%ed it because the, the, yeah. there was nothing I missed. I don't know how. The numbers don't lie, like Chris. Uh, <laughs> That's like um, Star Fox Adventures. I had 99% in that game permanently because I missed one item, and when you get to the final boss fight, if you ever load up your game, you have to do the final boss fight over again. So I was stuck at 99% unless I wanted to restart the whole game. Oh, nice. So Storybird <laughs> Games, and I've heard of them. Are they, um, have they been around a while? They've got a few games out, haven't they? There's a um, fine Teddy 1, isn't there? Yeah, there's the first one, and it's a point-and-click adventure, and I've had people on Twitter talking to me like, why isn't this another point-and-click adventure? Right, right. It looks but interesting. I, I, I've told them I don't care. It's it's a good game, and um, when my review comes out, it's definitely going to be positive. <laughs> cool, good stuff. So, sounds good. Uh, any other games, then, that have, that have taken your fancy this week? Um... I actually just finished up with Death Trap last week, and as I put in my review, um, I have it single-handedly restored my faith in the tower defense genre pretty much. Okay. Like Dungeon Defenders had for a while until I hit level 30 or something and it turned into a huge grind, but Death Trap, it, it takes limitations and uses them to it, its, its advantage. It puts like um, specific nodes that you can put a specific trap at and you put a trap there and what it's what it gives you instead instead of the freedom of putting it anywhere the traps anywhere is a very wide variety of traps and you can sit there and you have to figure out 
Like, how can I do the most damage to these people without being able to put another trap over here, per se? Right. Like, you, you slow them here, you put huge damage here, and it's it, it has a lot more strategy to it than you would think at first glance. And on top of that, it has the um, hack and slash action part of it, and God knows I hate um, those <laughs> tower defenses where you can't speed up you can't do anything you just sit there watching it at one uh, times yeah. the normal yeah it's I'm, just I, it I turn so them off slow. I, i'll delete them i usually i only play tower defenses on my mobile or pad um really i don't I haven't really played one on my pc apart from a few flash games there was one uh there was one that was out a while back called uh, ghost hacker if you remember that one or you played that but it was just a nah. flash game but it's i really liked it i thought it was really cool uh, I'm going to go on a limb here and say that the very best ever tower defense game, and non, no game has ever beaten it for me, is a game called Geo Defense on iOS. It huh? came out in two, uh, 2007, I think. Very, very old game, but it, uh, it just nothing has come close to that game for me. I like I tower defense that games. I, I'm, I'm a fan of them, but they're not something that I would ever put up there in my, you know, my favorite games. I don't think. Played the shit out of this game. It was amazing. <laughs> well, the problem that I see with tower defense games is even more so than platformers, where you'll have a specific set of like core elements and like one thing will be different, but it'll feel too familiar overall. Um, tower defense games tend to all sound or feel exactly the same, and that is the core problem with them. They don't do a whole lot. And Death Trap went out on a limb to say, okay instead of trying to give people more options and let them play some wherever like dungeon defenders let's cut it down and see what we can do with that hmm so it's, it said it looks again that's probably the first 3d um t t tower defense game i've seen or should i should say high fidelity 3d game i mean we've seen you know we've seen the uh, clash of clans type thing and that is, in fact is that a tower defense game clash of clans I it's not. I have it's, no idea what it is. No, I've, <laughs> so, I, I, it's been advertised on telly at the moment in England, so I'm it's presuming it's. So. It's kind of a, a mixture of. Uh, it, it is a weird sort of tower defense, but not really. Right. It's a weird one. It, yeah, that's a game I'll never touch because I see ads on um, Twitter and all for like. AOL stories where kids spent four thousand dollars on Clash of Clans and still isn't a top player, so it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going nowhere near that. <laughs> we've we've had a, f a fair few uh, conversations about pay to pay to win games, and it's 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 for it's for casual gamers, isn't it? I mean, me and Lou have both been in both played some games where we've paid a bit more than you would expect for people Quite who consider them more. yeah consider themselves serious gamers um, in a casual game, and then realised, hang on, what are we actually doing this for? Why? Why is it? You know? Why is it? Is it? Am I actually getting anything out of this? <laughs> is it? Am I just paying to up? You know, get closer to the top of the leaderboard? That's all you're doing, aren't you? The the most hilarious part about that, I think, is that we call them casual games, and they're pay to win. So they expect casual gamers to put more money into their games than hardcore gamers. It's it's a very weird thing that's been struck here. Not mm. only money, but time as well. I mean, people, you, you play, play these games in a casual setting in, in that you play it on your mobile phone or when you commute to work and stuff. You end up putting more hours into these games than a hardcore gamer would into a hardcore game. Yeah. I it's... imagine these people play things like um, Battle Pirates and, and, and uh, Legend Legend of Camelot or whatever it is, Kingdom of Camelot. King, I got, that was the one I got addicted to, Kingdom King, Yeah, King, King, I'm Camelot. sure they play these games, and even games like, like look at um, Candy Crush. Hmm. I'm sure that people play Candy Crush. The, the average person plays more Candy Crush than an average Call of Duty player would play Call of Duty. The, there's guys I worked with in the last place in the 50, 60 year old and they've got Candy Crush on the phone and it's like, they, they don't even know what games are, you know? <laughs> it's, it's... Yet they're playing this game for like <laughs> six hours a yeah, day. Every lunchtime, every lunchtime they'd be like that, playing it for the hour, for the entire lunch hour with a sandwich in hand. And I'd be like, really? <laughs> Half eating sandwich, just... Yeah. Don't care. Just oh. don't care about anything that's going on. <laughs> wow, that's kind of admirable. Well, one of our guys in chat has played over a thousand hours of DOTA and just recently made an in-game purchase. That is good. <laughs> I've I've played about seventeen minutes of Dota and uh, got bored very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not my. I'm, I, not, I'm not into mobas personally. I've tried so many mobas, and some of them come close to finally gra 
like getting to a point where I grasp what's going on, but every time I'll play like two matches, people will be yelling at me the whole time about how I'm doing something wrong. I'll finally start to nail down the skills and like somebody will stop me because they've for hours like not hours, for like an hour now they've been ten levels ahead of me and I'm finally like, I'm getting this, I'm getting this and I'm just completely outmatched. <laughs> Yeah, I, every single time. I never got into them when the first time first came out, and again, I see them as time sinks. I, I see them as I'd rather get some to me quality time with a game, with a new game, with a new IP, with something that's different or interesting, that's got an interesting experimental mechanic or you know a really cool way of doing something, rather than play the same game over and over and over and get really good at it. I've been there, but I was there in my Quake Two days, and I, I got really good at Quake Two, but I don't. I'm I'm not not up for that anymore. Not these days. Interestingly, there was um the, when I played MOBAs, it was when there were mods for Warcraft Three. Mm. Um, there was there was a map um called Aeon of New Era. Yeah, that's where they which started. We, though, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, which which we basically me and a friend modded this shit out of and basically turned it into our own version of the map. And I really, really, really enjoyed that. But that's the most enjoyment I've ever ever had out of MOBAs. But and that's probably with you because play... you were with your friend, though. Not only that, but we were actually working on the map, so we we were making it our own and doing cool stuff with it. It was it was really nice, actually. It's a pity. It, it was very hard to balance. Mm. Uh, you had to play a full game, and a full game would last, you know, at least thirty minutes, but more likely an hour, an hour and a half before you'd work out whether the balance was correct or not. Am I right in thinking that the idea of a MOBA, again, excuse my ignorance here, and I'm probably going to embarrass myself but the idea of a MOBA is to get one from one end of, of the map to another and S destroying towers along the way and capturing gold that's essentially yes, the idea isn't it well, well the, the, the base gameplay principle is that you've got two teams on either side of the map um, and you control a hero that tries to influence the, the, the battle that's going on so there's all of the the AI units which are spawning and just running mindlessly towards the other the enemy team mm -hmm. um, and there's towers and defenses and stuff set up but basically this will be a stalemate until you intervene and do something about it right. it's quite nice you feel like you're part of a, a large battle and you're, you're basically influencing the way that this battle's going i've watched a fair amount on uh, on twitch and you know i've tried to follow what's going on i've seen some really you know prestigious players playing mobas and you know i get i kind of get why they enjoy it but i also just I, I don't know i don't see how how it can be that enjoyable at the same time I, I, it feels like it's you're just doing the same thing over and they, over and over it can be really tense and it can be really tactical as well really um, yeah I, I do quite enjoy i enjoyed the one that i played in warcraft 3 i'd like to see someone do a very good first person version of it a first person shooter with the mobile mechanics and that's obviously what overwatch and stuff are doing um to a certain degree and the one um from gearbox that i've forgotten the name of already battleborn um, so there are two first-person MOBAs coming, so that'll be quite interesting. See, but they're also imagine, not very MOBA-ish. I was going to say, I imagine first-person MOBAs, though, from my, from, again, from my under limited understanding of them, that a, a third-person MOBAs is you're running around and when you engage an enemy, you start taking health off them, mm -hmm. all right, and, until they're dead. Yeah. Then you run away and you regenerate, and then you come back and start again, and you, you yeah. know, the intention is just to get last hits in order to get the gold in certain certain mobas and in other ones you don't need to do that I again don't fully fully know all the differences between them but in a first person one surely there'd be more experience like more skill involved in terms of like getting headshots taking more more damage it does people it or... just yeah it does change from am i, am I wrong am i misunderstanding something here sorry matt <laughs> no there's there's someone in chat going on because you, you guys were going on about how you used to play quake isn't quakes the same thing over and over yeah no totally i no i'm 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 100 percent there with you i actually hate those kind of games these days i'm i'm not into games where you're just running around shooting people anymore i want in i said interesting mechanics and and cool new things to do you say that, but you really, really enjoyed playing Quake 2. I still enjoy it for nostalgic reasons playing with you, but I would never play it online with anybody ever so again. So it's not really... It's, so it's the, the, you can criticise the gameplay for being repetitive, but it's not the gameplay that you play it for. It's the, the unique um, sort of, you know, interesting experiences that you have playing with someone else. They make the game interesting for you. Yeah, but online I don't think I'd get that anymore. 
I think I'd Probably have to be not. in the same room with somebody. And this is, I think, what I'm seeing with uh, with MOBAs. It, for me, it just feels like when I'm watching it, I'm watching a single streamer, usually, talking and going, oh, God, that. And then occasionally they'd, they'd type into chat and they'd be telling someone off for doing something that they shouldn't have done. And it's like, it's quite it just toxic, a game? It's quite not... toxic communities. I know League of Legends is basically legendarily toxic as a community. Well, you you do realize that this has been what sports has been for generations. You 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 see any gathering of people watching sports, and they'll be yelling at the TV like, "Come on, ref! What the hell's going on?" It's, it's right. the same thing. I'm not and, into uh, sports myself. I've never never really been into that. But you're right, and I suppose I kind of despise that that type that kind of human um, outburst. You know, I don't that I don't jockishness. See, yeah, I don't. I've never had that in me. I've never been really re I, I, well. I take that back. I had that in me when I played Quake Two, but only <laughs> only for Quake Two, and I, I got really annoyed at clan members and team members that didn't do what they were supposed to do, um, or you know, I'd sometimes get annoyed for the wrong reasons because I was a kid. But these days, I just don't have that in me. I'm not a particularly competitive person, apart from when I'm playing Lou. <laughs> Bring it on. That's only because it's and me and him, though. And we're never going to fall out over anything, you know. Yeah. And speaking of um, the online versus local thing, I think that part of my problem with it is that be online has become way too personal. And in an age mm. when, I mean, impersonal, impersonal, anyways, um, in an age where microphones, headsets, and all are becoming a common thing and people are saying to use them more and more, get on TeamSpeak, do this, less people are actually using them. Like, I remember going on Xbox Live back in the day and almost everybody had a mic and it felt like you were with a group of people that no matter how vile they were, you were actually sitting with a group of people and you could use that to say, okay, this guy's an annoying shit, let's go kill him. Mm. Um, nowadays, everyone's just quiet. Like, um, I played in the Evolve beta and I finally got a match with somebody that was talking and I, I talked with them and I'm sitting there like, this feels nice because we're actually having a conversation about how to take down the monster over the internet. And... Um, that's a good point you're making there. I never really one thought of, the, of that. One of the things that helps with in local is that we can still talk to each other. It's not as impersonal because people are actually talking. Well, I said that's that's what I enjoy. I enjoy the interaction. You can watch any you know any game between me and Lou or me and any of my other friends in the same room, and we'd be we'd be you know we'd have that competitive edge. And sorry, not competitive edge. We'd have that competitive kind of speak between each other. But if we're on the same team and we're against the AI, or we're you know, like say me and Steve versus Lou and Sam or whatever, if we're playing a game together, there'd be a little bit of right. Let's go and do this. Let's go, um, you know, you go that way, I'll go this way, and we'll you know whatever. It's it's nice to have that because you you're working for a common aim. Whereas when you're online and you're speaking to people, I have a feeling that people have stopped speaking to each other because it's become this cesspool of morons. I have to be honest with you, most of the time it's people who. <laughs> Who were playing the game? It seems just to troll each other a lot of the time. There's not really that much um, comp um, healthy competitiveness there, and I, or, or, or the desire to to want to do the, the the same thing and achieve a goal. You know, the prop that's what proper teams do, and good teams that work together in any respect want to achieve the same goal and and get there quickly. But I don't think when you're playing with randomers online, you get that, do you? No, and oh my god, I'm so tired of the um, people that get into a random group on MMOs, MOBAs, whatever you want to do. They get they get into a group and they will immediately start barking orders. And most of the time, their orders are terrible. Mm. But they think they know what they're doing. And they will actually drop out of the game if everyone doesn't stop and follow their orders. Fucking everyone else over because they decided that they well, were either going to be leader or... Bust. Super super armchair general. Yeah, I was going to say there's there's also the case of I mean I I I'm a in in life I'm a I'm a leader and I you know I try and get people to do some do things and and reach a goal but I also it a big part of that is listening as well and the problem with online again is that you don't have that 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 personal interaction where you can gauge someone's reaction to something that you say and you can go you can react accordingly you know and I think especially with randoms and especially if you're typing people read text messages the wrong way let alone quickly typed things that have been put into chat in a game you know oh man um raids in mmos when people don't have headsets and they do the 
typing thing. I'm sitting there like, what do these abbreviations mean? I have never <laughs> seen this before. I'm level 10. Give me a break here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, yeah, you're right there as well. Uh, try, joining a, a, uh, try joining a guild when you're low level as well, if they're bringing you up. and uh, no, no chance. No chance of going there. Anyway, let's move on to the next game. Uh, what, what else have you played? Anything else that's um, caught your fancy this week? Okay, so... Um, the Hunter recently... Okay, The Hunter is a hunting simulation. That's all it is. It's a hunting simulation. And it's very realistic, and um, it's got all this damage modeling on the animals that you hunt. And it recently put out an Outback setting. So we've been... My girlfriend and I have been playing that a lot. And um, we're going to do a video soon, I think, of the new Outback setting. But... Um, Basically, you can shoot kangaroos now, and it's kind of exciting because it's different. It's not like elk or deer or bears. It, it's kangaroos. It, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it, well, you're right. It is different, and it's nice to see, I suppose, it, Australia it, being put. The animation's not great, is it? Is it a, I'm presuming it's a, an indie game. Um, it started as an indie game. It's now backed by the guys who make Just Cause. All right, okay. They bought out the company or the game or something, but um, it's despite the fact that you're hunting, it's a very relaxing experience. I think it's just nice to just kind of walk around through these scenes, like pick up a call and go, "Hey, there's a deer. Let's shoot it." <laughs> do you do you go hunting in real life? Because that you know, I appreciate that's no, a thing I, in America. No, I, I can't actually handle firearms very well. I. Um, I've gone shooting before just for targets and stuff, and mm. by the end of the day, my shoulder is sore because I can't hold a gun right. <laughs> tell me, tell me about it. I um, I, I w went over to oh, about a couple of years ago. I went over to Georgia, and we, we, me and the wife, did a went on a shooting range. Her idea. I mean, bearing in mind that in England we don't have guns at all. Uh, we've got hunting hunting guns, but you don't generally get them and you have to have proper licenses for them and it's very highly policed, uh, pol policed. But um, I went over there and I, I tried all kinds of guns, all kinds of uh, different firearms, handguns, shotgun. The shotgun, my lord, it was so You found deer slugs? Uh, I, I can't remember what slugs there were, I'll be honest. I was so overwhelmed by the amount of firearms that were in front of me. <laughs> I had AK-47s, Uzis, um, at some, I think it was a spaz, uh, Spaz 12 shotgun. Combat shotgun, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, it this, it petrified me, the fact that I had this in my hands, this this shot, this shotgun, and you could just get it from the shop next door, and it was like, I know you couldn't just buy them, you'd have to go through certain checks, but it, yeah. to, to me, it's it's crazy, you know, to, was it? but it was, it was a good experience still. It was interesting to, to do it. Hunting with a knife? No, I, <laughs> I, 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 I could not do that. I'm not sneaky enough. I... Well, what, what, running jo running you, joke here. <laughs> what? Sorry. No, that's a running gag here. Is that I'm terrible at um, stealth games. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> so I, mean, I can't. In real life, I'd be even worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm a bit. I'm not. I'm not a particularly violent person. You know, in games, games is one thing. I'm not. I wouldn't ever take that into real life. You know, no. you wouldn't see me using a real gun to shoot someone in the face. <laughs> that way. <laughs> and these hunting games don't tend to. They tend to be very popular in in America, but they don't tend to be very popular. Uh, the European thing is basically um, farm simulators, I guess. <laughs> Sir, are you, you you are being hunted? Was quite interesting though. Yeah, but it wasn't really hunting. Games, a hunting it was game. <laughs> no, it was a runaway because you're getting hunted game. But yeah, but um, yeah, the hunter gets a lot of flack because it's got an awful. On the outside, it looks awful how much you have to pay for it, but in reality, it's just um, people don't understand the payment scheme. It is a subscription, but it's technically an MMO, so that's why it's got a subscription, All and right. it's only like three bucks a month. And once you've got your weapons, it's that's it. You don't have to buy ammo every time. You just you have it. It's done for. Mm. Right. And, so um, how, how does that model work then? Because I, I didn't even know it was a multiplayer game. It's um, it's got um. You have a subscription, and then you have a cash shop. But the cash shop is just to buy new weapons and to buy a permanent set of ammo. And once you have a subscription, you get so much ammo for each hunt, and then you have to leave the hunt and come back, and then you get that ammo back. But right. what I see a lot of people think you're doing is consistently paying for ammo, consistently paying for this. It, it's it's a permanent thing. You don't have to consistently pay for it, and people just they just, take it. They they put it. They've put that mechanic in there so you're uh, frugal with your ammo rather than. 
rather than just shooting crazily, you know, I imagine. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, that, that's okay. That's fine to me. I don't see a problem with that. And um, it, it does get a lot of flack, but it's very realistic, and it is um, actually quite refreshing for a lot of shooters. I've never played a hunting game, a uh, simulator game. I've, in fact, I, I'm not that big a fan of simulators in general. You know, actually, I, I've never tried... I haven't tried too many of them, and, and the, the things that I keep wanting to have a go of, but my problem, again, is that they are time sinks to me, and I'd rather get quality over quantity i think you know yeah i spent 12 hours playing the most recent farm simulator and i got nowhere mm. i mean we we were playing multiplayer and we still nothing got done pretty much we we, <laughs> we took to chopping down trees and taking them to the lumber mill because that was the most lucrative thing to do just repetitively chopping down trees taking them to the lumber mill buying a new vehicle to use later setting up the wheat farm and just it yeah. took 12 hours and we had like I think one new vehicle and a few add-ons. It, oh god, it was so much. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a, there's a guy that I, I watched on stream uh, on Twitch for a while, and he was playing Euro Truck Simulator. Someone in chat's just mentioned it. Um, I again, to me, that looks quite fun, They're like it, relaxing type thing. But I, I don't know much about it. I don't know if you do you buy trucks. Do you have a company and that kind of thing in it? Do you know? Is you're anyone? you're a truck simulator. You do buy trucks. You have a company, but it's actually a lot. You. You can get something done in an hour, unlike Farming Simulator. Right. Because um, you, you can just go across, take like one job or two jobs in an hour, get that done. You can feel a sense of accomplishment, and over a few weeks, you'll eventually have enough money to get a new truck, and it just slowly builds up from there. Um, so it's a lot different. It's it's not as much of a time sink as the other ones, but if you are one of those guys who has to have like the top truck now, it's going to be a time sink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I imagine. And I would, if I play a game, I want to be, I want to get the best, I want to complete it, you know? I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm one of these who'll do every single side task in uh, in Grand Theft Auto, you know, that kind of thing. I'm, I'd like to, nearly every single one. It's like when you have to collect, like, shoot all the pigeons or collect all the feathers in Assassin's Creed. No, not into that. But I will try and do all of the, like, the little, you know, like the, the other um, activities, I think, apart from the collection stuff. I'm really surprised you aren't more into achievements, Chris. Couldn't care less about achievements. No. Oh, I hate achievements. That's stupid. You loaded up the game. Here's an achievement. Well, <laughs> oh. Even even other stuff. I mean, I did uh, for a little while. I kind of chased my chased my gamer score on Xbox Live for a little bit. Um, Oh, but I've only got the, the gamer score that I've got really because I have so many games on my Xbox it's not because I've played them and completed them all <laughs> so yeah no I, I, to me achievements I, I understand why they're there for people who kind of want to be patted on the back but I'm playing it for my for my um, enjoyment you know I don't want to be told you're enjoying this here you go have 10 gamer points you know <laughs> I guess so one way to look at it are you, you're not into them either, are you, Lou? No, I'm not. I don't give a shit about achievements yeah. at all. I was into games before they gave me achievements, you know? <laughs> anyway. uh, there's only one case in which I'm into achievements, and that's when I'm playing through a game on Steam, and I quit out of it, and I'm, I'm finished with it, and I see 49 out of 50 achievements, and I'm just like, what? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't even pay any attention to that. I've, I think. I think Deus Ex: Human Revolution is probably the the closest I've got to a complete uh, achievement thing on Steam because I've played it through so many times in so many different ways. I think Left 4 Dead was the one game that I noted the achievements on, but I didn't try and get them all. But the, it it was quite fun trying to get the achievements. Some of them were really hard to get. That, that, that's interesting. It's the, the 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 challenge that some of the achievements put, but some of the achievements that are like you must play this like, um, Mass Effect. To, uh, two and three i think they had online only achievements i wasn't interested in the multiplayer in that game i wanted to play the single player story and i wanted to complete it and i wanted to invest in the characters and, and everything else but i couldn't i couldn't have got 100 percent because i would never have played it online because yeah i think i think some i think a lot of developers have lost focus of what the achievements are good for and i think the achievements are good for trying to get people to do do challenges it's like the um the the the, the stuff in grand theft auto that it's always had you know the, the crazy stunts and stuff mm, like that yeah that, that's cool i mean They're i've never chased them all but but yeah the, the achievements a lot of the time are like matt has said you started the game hooray well done what's it i was playing something the other day it was an indie game and i got appointment uh, um 
that was it it was uh, frozen synapse and i got steam achievement for for doing the tutorial and i had to do the tutorial there was no way to skip it or, or whatever I... <laughs> what anyway. anyway next 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 game so first uh, i good question are you gonna have achievements in your game chris <laughs> I've no plans to. I mean, if if I have to as part of the Steam package, then... You don't have to. No. Probably not. I don't know. It's, to be fair, at the moment, publishing and getting it on a platform is the last thing on my mind. Actually making a game with content in it is the is important now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> making a game that's fun to play and not just three different mechanics all kind of working, you know, it, it, they all work individually, but they don't really all work together as a game at the moment, unfortunately. And that's only because I haven't built it properly yet. I'm finished the building side of things. If I was going to put achievements to the game, I'd make them an absolute bitch to get. I'd make all of the achievements really hard. Well, the point is, is to me, I think if yeah, I'm, I, I'm with you there. Oh. What was it? The Gears of War achievement? That's like kill one million. Yeah, or something. <laughs> that, I played that <laughs> online actually, and I did get a fair few of the online achievements, but some of them were ridiculous, weren't they? Uh, I don't think I'd want to make them laborious. I just want to make them really skillful. That, that's yeah that's exactly what i'm saying uh, that's that, that's what i was agreeing with rather i don't mm. want something that is a million it's more about how to do something like if you're you know if you've done a particularly cool parkour movement in my game maybe you know if you've done a particularly cool combination and got into a secret area yes probably give someone an achievement for that you got to the mm. top of this building but which was bloody difficult you know and you've got something else from that. You wouldn't just get an achievement for reaching the top. You'd get a collectible or, or a particular weapon or something cool. I'm not having weapons, but you know what I mean? Whatever yeah. was co Again, I haven't thought of that part of the game yet. It's like <laughs> I wish Black Ice would have given us an achievement because we got to the top of the tower, the big one. We weren't supposed to. We rocket jumped off of one. Had I think somebody shot us in midair, and then <laughs> we used a jetpack or something else to get all the way up to the top of that building it was that insane such a, so like the thing that i'd want to do that's exactly what I'd <laughs> have be you doing. seen black eyes lou <laughs> i haven't no hey, you should I've check heard. it out it's a developer he's a nice lad as well and he's um he's doing pretty well from it i think isn't he he's uh he's he's got quite a lot of interest and it's an interesting kind of cyberpunk procedurally generated um oh, and he I added reflections it. that are really cool oh he had, he has, he's still working on it as well isn't he yeah is he is it classed as early access still? Yes. I wasn't sure if he put it in early access because I haven't. Yes, it I, I, I had it yeah. well before he was. Um, excuse me, well before he put it on Steam. So yeah, I paid for it way back when it first came out. I was like, hey, it came out here. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> mm. I like I liked the game. I liked the early betas that I was playing. Um, the interface needed a lot of work back then, but you know, he's, I liked the. Um, I liked the, the very Tron. Well, there's the variation really of everything you can do in that game. I think it's he's he's put a lot of time and effort into that, and I like it. And it's nice that he's he's got a game that's playable as well. Yeah, it's still first person, and it's it's got a very specific mechanic in it, isn't it? The hacking mechanic is. Yeah. Has he added more to it than that than than just the hacking stuff? Uh, honestly, I haven't played it in a while. Right, okay. So I thought you I thought you like a, a month or two. I played it last, and I can't remember. It's it's that's sooner than I've played it. It's it's been quite a while since I last played it myself. Okay, um, any other games you want to talk about, Matt? Um, I I want to give serious props to the Savage Lands team for fixing their initial launch thing because when it started, I um, it started up. It's a survival game and it takes place in a cold environment. And you can actually freeze to death if you don't have like warmth or anything your starter clothes will die off pretty quickly and you'll be left without anything that has durability that you can um wear for warmth and when it hits nightfall your house won't keep you warm either uh -huh. and they started the game with exactly the wrong things missing like you can't you couldn't relight fires your torches go out really quickly <laughs> and your torches barely provide heat at all um, if you wanted to stay alive, you'd have to constantly be looking for flint and your campfires would be numerous in front of your house because you can't relight a fire, so you'd have to build a whole new one. And they finally fixed that so that you can relight fires and um, you can actually kill deer now. You don't have to chase after them and chase them into the sea where you freeze to death in the ocean. So it's actually playable now and it's fairly cool. Is it multiplayer? Cool. 
Yes, and it's um very good looking game. Oh uh, yeah, it looks really nice. That I've not heard of this before. It's, it's different because it's not a zombie survival game. It's a fantasy Yay! survival game, <laughs> and you're up against like skeletons and dragons and ants and stuff. Lou's, and it's Lou's favorite type of enemy: skeletons. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a list. <laughs> what? That, that was gonna be my list. <laughs> Well, we can still use it. Bastards! Because we've said skeletons doesn't mean we can't use it as a list. No, I like, actually, I like the look of that game. I just added it to my wish list, actually, because I'm, I'm looking for a few new survival games. And it's, it's actually fairly complete. It's just what they had missing made the starter experience terrible. Hmm. That's all it was. If you died, and still, if you die, and you're without your stuff, and you're nowhere near where you were, and you can't find yourself, you're screwed. You have to start all over. But, um... They're getting there. It's it's very well put together so far. It's more stable than any other survival game I've ever seen hit early access, and it's backed by Signal Studios, who did um, what was it? Toy Soldiers, and I, I yeah. have some pretty um, I have pretty cool. high hopes for it. Yeah, I like the look of that. I'm I'm glad you've brought that to my attention. So the the, the last survival game really that I've played. Um, not 3D, it's 2D. Uh, don't Starve. I don't know they brought out a multiplayer expansion yeah, to that recently. Don't Starve is great. It's also brutal. I've still not been able to get past like night seven or something. The, the, you, get oh, attacked, you get attacked by wolves and I just can't figure out what to do. I, I've got to that about six or seven times now and I'm like, right, I'm, I'm prepared. I've got walls built up. I've got, uh, you know, I've, can, I've, st I've tried running away from them for the entire night. Just can't, I just kept getting killed. We survived once in multiplayer and very barely. I think one of us died. It's it's atrocious. I've actually I actually take took to um, installing mods. You know, you can have mods where you can reload and you can change. Uh, you can again, you can save scum, and uh, you can change all the like the the attack parameters for each of the enemies as well. And I still couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, without turning turning things off, I couldn't do it. You know, and I don't want to do that. When I when I cheat, you know, when I when I install mods, I try not to cheat too much. <laughs> if that makes sense. I've got I've got my own yeah. little moral compass with it. That looks cool. I'm, uh, I think I'll um, get that. It might even be I'm worth that to my Kingwin uh, checkout. It Can't might, now. might <laughs> even be worth to worth you and I having a having do a, a let's play. Hey, yeah, if you want, yeah, I'm up for that. I'm up for oh, yeah. that. Uh, All right. Go on, so and next game. I think you guys will like Gunscape. Gunscape is like, it's very much like Quake, and it's 3D, and what it is is they have a Minecraft-like building scenario thing where you can build your own levels in either campaign levels or multiplayer levels or whatever in a Minecraft-like way, and then you can um, fight <laughs> on them. Yeah. Sorry, it's just, I just looked at the demo trailer and he's running around like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because they have fists in it. You can beat each other up by punching. Nice. nice. And um, it's um, in early access right now. It's free to play, and you can play on anybody's levels. You don't have any limitations. But if you want to actually make levels, you're probably going to have to put some money into it to get the block sets. Right. And that's how they're doing their business model. So you can play forever for free, but if you want to build, you need to pay. It actually looks pretty good. I, uh, I like the look of the graphics. A very old school graphics. It, it yeah. immediately does not appeal to me. I have to be honest with you. I'm, I, I said I used to be into Quake. I still play Quake Two with my friends. Not bothered about it now. You know, like that strafe that. Uh, yeah. That got a Kickstarter. That's what this a while looks back. like. Yeah, it looks a bit like strafe, doesn't it? I'm, I've had enough of that. I don't just want to shoot things. I want to do something. I, but you build levels, don't you? You said it's like yeah. a Minecraft yeah. type thing as well. There was, um, there was a mod for Half-Life 2 that came out where you could build your own bases with the gravity guns. Um, I forget the name of it now. I think it probably had some some really boring name like bases. But that was pretty cool. I like the oh, idea of that, of, of having a phase where you'd build your forts and then you'd have to fight fight it out. Hmm. I do like that. I think that's quite a cool... I see. That's, that's what, uh, if we go back to the old days of Worms and that kind of thing, I used to enjoy like kind of breaking the immersion of the game and just going right let's have the first 10 phrases where we're setting up a, our bases with setting yeah. the you know we've got infinite girders or whatever and we set our bases up and then we and then we attack each other within yeah, seconds like your bases are destroyed but yeah i like that i like that i see where it's coming from but i think I, i've never been a fan of the, the minecraft type 
things, though. I mean, Terraria I really enjoyed, but I, there's something about the, th- the 3D building space that I'm, I don't enjoy. Mm. <clears throat> like, uh, we, played, we played Space Engineers um, a, a few weeks ago. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I, I just just lost myself somewhere well to be fair space engineers is a lot more complex you actually have to build things that work you don't just build like a structure yeah i tried medieval engineers and i was having a hell of a time just getting a catapult to work yeah i mean one of our, our other friends uh, other host stay he's uh, he's really into that kind of thing but he's an engineer in real life so you know he's He's into building things. He was all over that shit, wasn't he? He built massive contraptions with with hinges and mechanisms and stuff. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, Okay, so you have played a few other games, so yeah. Are these still interesting ones? Matt? What do you mean by that? Well, I'll say, are you? (laughs) Do you still want to talk about the other three that you've got Uh, on your list? (laughs) Well, the guy in the um, chat mentioned a crawl, and I've played that with a group, and it's actually pretty fun. It's, um. What's that, sorry? Crawl. It got. It got greenlit in about five days because it has very impressive pixel art. Um, Ah, yes, I've seen this. Yeah, don't you play as the, um, the, the bad guy or something in it? Well, what happens is you have, um, players. like up to four and you have one of them plays the hero and tries to get through the dungeons and then gets the boss and kill the boss and then everyone else is a ghost that can take over like different objects (laughs) or become enemies and whoever kills the hero character then becomes the hero character and the hero character becomes a ghost and it becomes an endless cycle and you're as you're trying to kill the hero so that you can level up so that you can then take on the boss and once you go to the boss that um boss has several different um like you can control the head or you can control the arms and different people take over different parts of it and try (laughs) to kill the um the hero that sounds the hero that sounds really interesting actually and it looks really nice as well looks like it plays well and it's multiplayer so that was one of the that was one of the yeah i think i might add that to my uh to my basket as well i We're really want again the, matt you're giving us some good ideas here for games I, I love the idea of being the enemy i think oh. i've been in love with that idea since left for dead because left for dead is so brutal it's so utterly utterly brutal when you've got four people beating the shit out of one guy it's just, yeah i love it and it's when someone becomes a tank and then suddenly you know you're just punching cars into the the, the players um, well, I'll get attacked by a horde. I just want to acknowledge that it was Potato that brought Crawl up. Sorry, not not Matt. I, I forgot. Sorry, just, <laughs> just in case he gets annoyed. Um, yeah, I, I'm, that looks cool. I'm up for that. Yeah, um, there are a lot of great local multiplayer games coming out in recent times, and I'm actually kind of excited by this because, um, as you know, WizFight was local multiplayer, and I did it because... I really want to bring back the social gaming of playing together in one space, and it depresses me quite a bit that there aren't more games that do that. We, we like, had a, we had a show about this a while back, and we we all agree with you. It's exactly the same. We we've had we had so much fun with our last LAN party. We played Nidhog for almost the entire LAN, and we mm-hmm. did not get bored of it because it was so much fun. Just just you know yeah. playing in the same room with each other, and I haven't done that for years. And I, and I want to give a good shout out to um, what was it? Final Form Games, who just put out Jamestown Plus on PlayStation Four. It's local multiplayer, and it's a upgraded version of Jamestown, which was recently on PC and everything. And it is a hell of a lot of fun because it's a local multiplayer shmup, and shmups are ex- extremely difficult on your own. And this one, it's as long as one player stays alive, you can still respawn. So it's fun to just like sit there and yell at the other guy, like, "Okay, I died. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. Come on, <laughs> it's five seconds. Come on, you can do yeah, it." Yeah, yeah. That's that's what it is, though, isn't it? That's the fun, and it goes back to the being in the same room as each other while playing a team game as well. Even if you're on different computers, it still makes a big difference to the enjoyment and. There's not enough of that. This is why I don't play multiplayer games online. I, I don't. I'm not, I have no interest in MMOs, Dota, uh, um, MOBAs. No interest in. I'm not even interested in playing FPS games, and I'm mainly an FPS gamer with random people because it's just not fun. 
I don't get any enjoyment out of it. I don't. I don't really want to chase a level cap. I don't really want to chase a um, new gun or, or unlock all of my skills. I, I want to play games with my friends and enjoy them. You know. Which actually, speaking of which, Gunscape has local multiplayer. Right. Cool. Yeah. Right, well, uh, maybe maybe look at that. I said um, I doesn't <laughs> appeal to me that much, but we'll see. So, Shiftlings. What's this one then? That one is another one that has both local and online multiplayer, and it is actually one of the most clever puzzle platformers that I've seen in recent times. What it is, it's um, you play on like a, you're two ridiculous looking aliens on a game show type thing, one grouchy one and one that just looks like they have no idea what's going on ever, and you're trying to repair things across the galaxy, except this, the one that doesn't look like they have no idea what they're doing drank a whole... Oh, you breaking up a bit Matt sorry oh he was he was on a good one then as well anyway we've just pasted a, ch a, a link into chat for that sorry Matt I think we've lost you I'm just looking at it now yeah he's so gone I'll tell you what while, while we're getting Matt back um, Lou you've played a few games this week haven't you so I have yes I've played a few games today actually um, I finally despite the fact that I was one of the massive the, the biggest proponents of this game and kickstarted it and everything. I finally played Chaos Reborn. And? Um, and I really like it. Oh, right, you do like it. I do like it, yeah. I was a bit reticent at first. When I when I, when I I looked at it, it looked... I didn't like the hex grids, and I was going to have a big uh, discussion with Matt about this, because he does like hex grids. I'm <laughs> not a fan of them. I like square grids. But um, Chaos Reborn is brilliant. Ah, we've got him back. Yes, <laughs> yes. Sorry, Chaos sorry. We just we moved on to one of Lou's games because you you disappeared. But um, yeah, yeah I've I've been following Case Reborn as well because I, I, when you explained the chaos um, system to me, many, I've never played it, so I really liked the complexity involved in it, and I really liked that it wasn't just a another. It, 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 there was a lot more involved than just fighting somebody. You know, yeah, but I can't again. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I did enjoy like some of it. Where where about did you hear about Chaos Reborn, Matt? Kickstarter. Kickstarter. I played the right. demo back during Kickstarter, and it it was a lot of fun. Um, it's actually, I'm surprised with how fast paced it is. I never played the original, but it looked kind of slow. No, and the original is very fast paced as well. Actually, is it uh, real time then, or I thought it was turn based? No, it, it's it's turn based, but the turns don't last very long. Right. Uh, there's not that much to do in a turn, and the games are limited normally to 25 turns maximum. Unlike unlike Civ. Yeah, right. you can get these games over in, in literally 10, 20 minutes, uh, which makes it a really good sort of brawler. Yeah. Turn-based brawler. So is this this isn't a local multiplayer thing, though, is it? It's yes, a... it is. Yeah, it's it's local multiplayer. It's um It's got bots, which are not very good at the moment, and it's got online multiplayer as well. So this is something we could potentially play together in a, in a yeah. LAN environment, then? I'm not entirely sure if the local multiplayer is, is, is in there yet. I think it is, actually. Yes, it is, because you can set it to human players. Yeah. Um, and Steve's got it as well. He kickstarted it. I think it was the first thing he kickstarted. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely get hold of it if you two have played it, and it comes with a, you know, with a recommendation. I'll be up for that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I played a bit of it today, and it's certainly not the original Chaos, and I think that I'm, I'm always going to hold that against it. Yeah. The, the original Chaos had had a charm about it and a, a, a kind of a procedural nature you basically every game started out on a blank board just a big square board or a rectangular board and you turn you basically when you played the game the entire game was what you made of it whereas at this it kind you play it out in semi-procedural uh landscapes and it feels a bit like you're you're in maps that have been created to fight right. in I'm not a big fan of that. I like the, like the idea that in the original, every game was completely different because of where people did things, what units to cast, where they placed walls and blobs and stuff. Um, so that bit is lost, unfortunately. So but your, it's still your, a great game. Your game, your your remake that has been mm -hmm. blessed by Julian Gollop. Um, for for those who do not know, Lou is attempting. I don't know how far he's getting into it at the moment. I don't think he's doing much on it. I haven't he's, touched it in a while. He's, he's attempting to remake the original Chaos game, and it's called Our Chaos. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been impressed with your progress, but obviously it's it's halted so far. Where are you up to with it, and what, what are your plans? Be so I've, I, I've got the server implementation, so I've gone balls to the wall and made this 
from the beginning an online multiplayer experience because I think that was the thing that was missing from the original game. The one thing that was missing from the game was being able to play it online with friends. Mm. So I, long time ago now, probably in 2009, 2010, wrote a pretty complete server impl implementation. And what I've really struggled with is the client, the front end stuff. And I, it's gone through many different languages. Uh, for a big point in its development, it was actually done in ActionScript 3 in Flash. Um, and I really got to like that. Now I've got prototypes done in HTML5, JavaScript, and I think that's probably the direction it's going to go in now. Okay. I do still want to work on it, but I just haven't had the time recently. But I, I keep, all the time, I think, right, I really should get back into doing this and get on with it again. And every time I think I would be able to do it better. And that's, that's the, another problem. Yes, if you leave something for long enough, then you're learning quicker than you're developing. As, an, so, in, as an indie game dev, you have to make uh, uh, compromises and you have to stop being so perfect, so much of a perfectionist in order to get things done and get something out there. If if the, there's a, a chart going around on Twitter at the moment, it starts with something like, "If you um, how uh, do you still want to work on this game? Yes. If you do, get you know how far. What what's the shittest possible thing that you can do to get it out there? Do that. Do you still want to work on this game? What's the shittest possible thing you can do to get it to the next stage? You know, and and go on yeah. and go on. Otherwise, ship it. It's done. You know? I agree, completely agree. And the, the problem, the problem is that it's a deceptively difficult game to program. It see loads and loads and loads of people have tried to do remakes of it, and many people have failed when they've realised actually, for a simple game, this isn't as simple as it seems. And there are very strange exceptions to rules and and illogical, no, not illogical, but very non-linear flows to the way the game works that make it deceptively difficult. Yeah. But I think I can crack that. It's just a case of getting my finger out and doing it. it and is. the art, the art's done for it. The, a lot of the front-end programming is done for it. The, the the only thing left really is just to get my thumb out of my ass and assemble it. It is. That's exactly Finish what it. it is. So, so watch the space. Yeah, Matt, you were talking about uh, shiftlings just before you disappeared. Then. Well, first, um, in regards to like chaos and stuff, he was oh. talking about how it's a dynamic game and it had this procedural nature to it. I think he'd be interested in um, a Druid's Duel, which came out recently. It's actually a um, game where you can create and destroy land and the land actually determines how much how many resources you get you have to capture land by standing on it there are a bunch of different like units that can fly and attack things or can just run fast or whatever and yeah i've seen this before this game i've been following the the the, the um the work on this i'm not entirely and, sure i would like this to be honest well it I just thought maybe with the um, way that you can destroy and create land and make completely new arenas and that the fact that you, by destroying the arena or making new things, you can either take away or gain resources from it. This game actually reminds me a hell of a lot and it probably is quite similar to um, that game that we were playing, the, uh, the turn-based strategy game that you trounced me on. Oh, um, uh, Mutant Gangland. It doesn't Mutant look Gangland. anything like it. It doesn't, but the, I, I, it feels that the gameplay is about that, about capture and hold and um, spreading out units and creating new units and stuff. It, it looks... looks it's, yeah, it's a lot more elaborate. Yeah. Well, it looks, it looks all right to me, that. It's on my wish list now. I think, I think I've got a very specific um, requirement for, real, uh, for, for turn based strategy games. And I can either really like it or really not like it based on that. It's kind of like... You know, if you like a sport, and then there's there's a, a very slightly, <laughs> slightly different version of that sport, you'll really hate it because it's not quite the same. Mm. I think it's that sort of thing. That's like Is I discovered Australian rules football earlier in the year, and I watched <laughs> a video of it. I have no idea what's going on. It's I Australian just... no rules football. I think it should be called. <laughs> and it shouldn't be called football either. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> Americans. <laughs> I'm not into football, actual real football, I'm, soccer, as you call it. I, d I don't like it. Most most of England does, but it's... <laughs> at least you play Which with is, a foot. Yeah. 
I just I don't understand the circular arena and the fact that most of it is done by like tossing it a very specific way. <laughs> I, 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 I just about follow rugby, world, the rugby rules. I'll be honest. Um, I quite like rugby in general, but I don't. I don't know American football rules. I've got no idea how it works. And don't try and explain it to me either, because yeah. it'll be as one far of- as I can <laughs> tell, if you drop the ball anywhere in the pitch, you score at least some points. I think that's the way it works. So I just drop the, the ball constantly right oh, where yeah. I stand. I don't know. Well, unfortunately, he's gone again, so he can't explain explain that to us. I'm, I'm sure that's an oversimplification, and that would have been stamped out early in the sport. But yeah. yeah. I don't really understand it. So, your next game then, Lou. Hotline Miami? Yes, um, I thought I'd bite the bullet and finally buy Hotline Miami 2. Um, I've played up to Act Stage 4, I think it is, so far. Yep. A lot more story-heavy than the original. There's there's multiple characters in this. You play as multiple characters and the story kind of unfolds in multiple different pathways as you're playing it. Okay. So, if, so far, I've played as about four different characters, I think. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting. It feels like it's all going to converge onto onto something. It probably will do. By the but if you we're talking about Hotline Miami uh, to uh, Matt. Uh, uh, yeah, I've I've heard it's quite um, a lot more expansive than the first one in terms of levels. It doesn't seem to be that way so far, but I'm not that far into it. Um, it doesn't feel that much different, to be honest. It feels like a lot more has gone into the story than into the game and try to change the mechanics too much uh, it seems harder it seems a lot harder which is probably a good thing since also, most of the people playing it will be playing people who've played the original I've also heard that the story is kind of not what it should be it's very strange it's, it's it, there's multiple character arcs in it seemingly. did you not think the first game's story was strange and, and hard to follow in general well of- I the way I put it, or thought it was in the first game, you were like insane, and when you went to meet the people in the apartment with the different personalities, it was just you. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I, I kind of, I, that was one of the thoughts that I had, but there was also kinds of all kinds of other things that I was thinking: is the mafia involved, or is, I didn't, I didn't fully follow everything, you know. It can. <laughs> it, well, the second game goes on, follows on from the first one in in many ways, uh, but it expands it so that there's multiple characters all seemingly insane as well like there's mm-hmm. people having experiences where suddenly you know the the guy with the chicken mask appears and starts talking to him and only he can hear him or there's a there's a phone ringing but only you can hear the phone ringing right you know, there's weird stuff like that where you think basically all these characters are nut, nutcases uh and it still <laughs> has the same feel of, of that that slightly uncomfortable feel of you know you're murdering people and yeah gratuitously not entirely sure why you're murdering them but you've got to go in and kill this person I- I visibly recoiled in the first game when you skull fuck the one guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there there are a number of things in games sometimes that I find a bit disturbing, and you know I'm not I'm not one of these people who gets offended by things easily, but I don't particularly want to be a person in a game doing that. If you know what I mean? Well, like, I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I like my. On. Interestingly, at the start of Hotline Miami 2, but it, the first thing it does is, is ask you a question, which is, there are scenes which will allude to a graphical sexual nature. Um, do you want to skip these, yes or no? Oh, I wouldn't say no to it, because I want to experience the game for what it is. Yeah. Um, and yes. But it's interesting that it does that. It actually gives you the choice of skipping possible... Oh. Then you can't complain about it. Scenes. You can't and complain about it if you've clicked yes, then. And I'm glad they put that in. And this is going to be completely different, but... Um, that reminds me of the whole thing with visual novels and people have this certain stigma about visual novels that they're all just sex games and um, the ones that actually do have a really good story like Cartagra which I reviewed still have pornographic elements for the most part and they're gruesome in some of them like in that one you see people naked with like their arms cut off and their legs cut off but um, I've always said that I'm not going to sit there and play a game or read a book or watch a movie in a cut form. I, I, I have to experience it how it was meant to be because if the author intended it that way, then why should I... Uh, maybe I should just skip it instead of watching the cut version. 100% with you. 100% with you. And and But I know that you have very strong opinions on things. Do you... Your, your opinions are... You don't seem to complain about 
things, if that makes sense. Your opinions are kind of formed from the dis maybe some of the decisions that have been made, but you don't. I don't know. It's hard. To, it's hard to distinguish this. I suppose. <sighs> I try and keep my opinions out of the public eye in terms of, you know, I'll, I'll say things on this show, but I don't really, I'm, I, I like non-PC stuff. I enjoy stuff that pokes fun at people who get too politically correct. And 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 uh, I'm, I'm very much of the opinion that everything can be laughed about and everything should be, should, nothing should be taboo, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, and and I, I'd rather an artist or a director or, or whoever, actor or whatever, puts that out there in the fullest form. And they, yeah, yeah, exactly the same. I'm repeating what you've just said, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty much of the thought that part of the problem with today's media society around it is that we're too sensitive about things that are completely natural. People die. People die in gruesome ways. Mm -hmm. People have sex. It's all natural. And we shouldn't be trying to hide this, but like maybe not show it forefront, but we should ex be more accepting of it. And maybe it won't be as much of a problem. I think, I think the, um, although I have a bit of a problem with things like the, TV showing things and, and just before the adverts it says just before the, the show comes back on after an advert it says this this has some swearing in it graphical nature sexual type stuff I, I I've got a bit of a problem with that because people are just babies if they're watching something like I'm thinking right okay I'm going to admit something here that I'm not proud of but I watch Big Brother with my with my wife right, <laughs> All right? I, and it's not it's not something I would choose to watch but I watch it with my wife so and, and every single time they have something controversial happening on the show because they're covering their backs, they put this warning on there and it's plastic. it gets worse and worse every year. I mean, the, the warnings take longer than the actual like clips that the show. It's getting ridiculous. And it's like, if you're watching Big Brother, expect racism, expect people punching each other, expect people having sex on television. You know, all that kind of stuff. That is what Big Brother is. And if you're watching a film that... You know, it is a violent film. It's rated an 18. Surely the fact that it's rated an 18 should be enough, you know, to know that... Or rated it, R in certain countries. Yeah, or, or it, it should be enough to know that's that's potentially going to have some graphic material or sexual material in it. I, so, I, don't, I don't think we need all these warnings everywhere, but I, again, I understand, I appreciate that he's added this into this game because he's probably going to get some complaints at some point. But that's a, it's yeah. different. It's interactive, that. It's different from a film and a TV medium. Waffling, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so shall we? Uh, you've got a couple more games on your list. Janky Tanks and Armello. Armello? Well, real quick, I wanted to go back to Shift Lanes because okay. I never got to finish. It's um, pretty clever because it's a co op game where you have puzzles but you can't stray too far from each other, so you're constantly trying to figure out, okay, how far do I have to go to get here so that I can let this person up, and when do I have to switch from the fat one to the skinny one so that, um... Like, oh. we can get through. And every now and then, they'll have things where you have to, like, climb up on top of, like, a post that's sticking out, wrap the cord around it, then drop off as the fat one and get the other one to fly up, and I thought that was really cool. Right, sounds like there's some interesting mechanics in it. Then it's uh, yeah, yeah, I love it. I'll have a look at that again. Um, so janky tanks, then what's that? What's that about? It's it's kind of like a brawler game with tanks, you know, like one of those arena things where you shoot at each other. And what it's based on is basically it's a game where you have tanks that don't work right. If you shoot, you're going to go the opposite direction because your tanks are not built right. And the entire game is based on, like, rocket jumping with the cannons <laughs> and ma maneuvering yourself around by shooting in the opposite direction. <laughs> it's, right. it's hilarious. I'd and, say that uh, looks like a lot of fun. Is it local multiplayer again? Yeah, yes. local co-op. You can't actually kill each other without knocking the other person off of the level, so it's really fun to see who like <laughs> knocks themselves off first, or if you can get hit them and get them to fall off. I think that would be a lot of fun again, multiplayer. It, it looks it's it. pretty hilarious. The fact that it's got real explosions occasionally in the video—that's just that's comedy in itself. 
And, and janky, yeah, I get that now, janky tanks. <laughs> that yeah. looks good. That looks fun, that. So you're, you are um, you are pretty much, nearly every single one of these games has got local multiplayer. So you're, that is your remit, essentially, isn't it? You're you're really yeah. into your local multiplayer games. You should have had your one for that show. <laughs> had I known? Yeah, I play a lot of them. Um, Armello? Armello is a digital board game of sorts. It's like an RPG and a board game combined. Your the whole goal is to go on quests that it'll randomly assign to you on the level. Like it'll you'll have to go on a quest to this village to do whatever, and all you have to do is go over there and you select a card to test a certain stat that you have. And based on the stats level, you'll either succeed or fail. And um, the goal of it is you get prestige from completing these quests and from various other things. And when you die because another player attacks you or an NPC attacks you, or if you attack a guard or something, you'll lose prestige. And the person that has the most prestige at the end of each turn, which is a day and a night... Mm -hmm. Um, you get to choose something that affects everyone else. And they're always bad, and they're always going to affect you too, but you get to choose between one or the other. Like, here are two bad options. Which one do you want? And then you win the game by either killing the king or having the most prestige at the end or this or that. There are several ways you can win, and it's it's pretty cool. It's um probably one of the best examples of a digital board game that might not be possible in a real life setting that I've ever seen. So I noticed that this is uh, this is not strictly related to this game but I noticed this has also got the hex grid thing on me. We started a, a very brief um, <laughs> discussion about it before you disappeared a while back. Hexes you... are better. <laughs> go, go on, tell me it's why. Immutable. <gasps> They have better strategic value. You can kind of go around people rather than just kind of going catty corner. You can um, place more enemies around one thing. If you only have one access to a hex, it's more damaging than if you have... It, it, it's They're better. It's End of story. So are we talking about hex versus grid, or are we talking like square well, grid? Hex versus, grid squares. versus squares, yeah. Okay, so what about hex versus grid versus open? Because surely you could still do the same kind of game on an yeah, open. Yeah, there are turn-based games with open things, and yeah. it's that. Oh, they get botched a lot. It's, right. They don't. They don't do the turn systems right. The amount of space you can move. It's. It's not right a lot of times, and it just feels awkward. And so, why do you prefer Grids, Lou? Um, I prefer the simplicity of it. I don't like the idea with a hex grid that you've got to basically do this to go in a straight line. <laughs> I don't like the fact that I, I, I like to reduce the up. No, well, that's one of the one of the silly things. But one of the main things is that it, it doesn't feel natural. I know that a, a square grid is no more natural, and in fact, hex grids appear in nature. But it, there's something there's there's something really weirdly artificial about it, and the fact that you can surround people in a hexagonal shape. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like the intuitive way to 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 partition up a play space. To me, I I think I'm I'm going to award Matt the points here because I'm the judica adjudicator. I have, I have to be because I don't really have an opinion either way. I think one works for one type of game and one works for another type of game differently. Um, Hex, I think, in my probably first or most redeeming memory of playing Hex is Civilization uh, when it's been introduced into that. And yeah, but it never was. It, it was originally a square grid. But this I is like the thing, you, you talk about how games might work one way with one grid and one way with another grid, but the fact is a lot of these games have gone into a hex grid from a square grid. Because hex grids are better. <laughs> yes. I, I don't think they are, though. This, <laughs> and is, this is the thing. So, the call drops, so one second. Um, <laughs> you, you can go in straight lines with hexes in four or three different directions or whatever, but um, the... Um, thing with square grids is you have to do that staircase thing if you want to go diagonally. You still have mm -hmm. that. It's just oh, you can do even the 1. more annoying. 1.4 1. turns to go uh, move, like movement points. Right. Let's, to let's just move diagonal. to decagons. Screw hexes. Screw squares. De let's decagons. Get decagons. You, can't, you can't make a decagon grid. <laughs> I'm sure you would be able to. You can only make a grid out of triangles, hexagons, and squares. Well, Anything else doesn't link, link just up. A, I, I, Look at him thinking about this. Sides. A, a, dec a decagon is just 
a, a variation polygon. of a hexagon, isn't it? Hang on, no, no hexagons are eight got ten sides. or six. Okay, I'm not lot... talking about decagon then. I'm talking. Is it a dodecahedron? The twelve, or is that a twenty? No, that, no you got it. Three D, three D shapes. <laughs> Whatever twelve is, then for fuck's sake. <laughs> twelve would be. What would twelve be? Uh, sure. Decagon. Yeah, you're right. Is ten. So it's a dodecagon. Uh, the twelve sided polygon would be a do dodecagon. Yeah. Yes. A uh, dodecahedron would be a twelve sided three uh, D shape. Yes. So I what we could go for a dodecagon then you've you pretty much solved all the problems. I, I don't think you can make a grid out of that. Yes, you can because it's a it's a multiple of a, a hexagon. Yeah, but it's it's how it actually fits into a grid. It'll work. You, can't, you, you couldn't make a grid where it's twelve sides all linked up. You just have loads more spaces on the grid, loads more um, sections of the grid. Overlapping. No, they just, don't overlap. You just have a node grid then, basically. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make a decagon grid. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a grid anymore. It would be it would be a node. Layouts where basically every node had con a, a, as many connections to every other node as you wanted, or every adjacent node. It'd just be more points. I, d I don't understand that. It'd just be more things on it. But anyway, I, I I said just as you your, the call dropped, Matt. I said that I award you the uh, as the, as the adjudicator. You win. I think that <laughs> yes. I think that hexagons, hexagons. Oh God. Hexagons, yes. Hexagons yeah. are better grids than squares for pretty much the reasons that you've you've pointed out and lose wrong. That's cool. I, I can deal with that. <laughs> Just so that you know, though, that our chaos will still be a square grid. Oh god. Because screw Cause, you. Because because the nineties. Because the nineties. That's all it is. Well, is there, I'm, I'm actually day? Just, I've just uh, bought Xenonauts as well, which is a remake of the original XCOM, and that's stuck to a square grid as I well. Think, I think I've got Xenonauts. This um. This is like the argument in um, this is Spinal Tap. Um, <laughs> why is My this better? Goes it to goes 11. to eleven. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but why is eleven better? Because it's eleven. Because it's one louder than ten. <laughs> Surely. X's have two more sides, therefore they're better automatically. Yeah. Okay, so unless you one of unless either of you have anything else you want to talk about or mention, I think I'll wrap the show up. We usually do have we usually do talk about news and do a list section, but we've we've ran over a little bit, and to be fair, had a lot more to talk about than I was expecting today because we because uh, I struggled to get any news, and uh, it's we've had two shows this week. So are you two wrapped up? I'm good. Happy? Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 happy with being wrong about grids. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, are well, you, uh, you got any any other business you want to talk about? No, nah, that's about it. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much for coming on. You've been uh, a wonderful guest and very thank knowledgeable. You, um, it's it's always nice to have people on that, that know the stuff about you know games or game development or whatever. And it's nice to have someone who can kind of join in with the conversations and and get involved and has has definitely has opinions. <laughs> um, and thank you to everybody in the chat. Um, Lewis Hood, uh, we don't use Bitcoin. Thank you for asking. I'm not sure what that what that alludes to, but um, we we don't. No, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what we'd use it for either. To be honest, but, donations. Um, um, well, yeah. Sorry, I was I wasn't thinking of donations, but um, no, unfortunately not. Unless unless the the link below has a Bitcoin facility, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, so yes, thank you very much for everyone who's watching. Uh, we are back next Wednesday with our next show. Um, I'll let Matt quickly pimp any links or any projects that he's working on or any reviews that you've got coming up or anything like that. Mm. Just um, if you want to see what I'm talking about at any time, GameWalkers.com. That's it. Fair enough. We didn't actually talk about GameWalkers that much, and uh, I'm assuming that's a it's a review site mostly, isn't it? The, yes. Yeah. Okay. Reviews and news. Reviews and news, cool. Okay, so um, if you are interested in anything we do, we now have a new website, www.resonancearcade.com. Uh, we also are, we're also on Twitter, forward slash Resonance Arcade, uh, Facebook, forward slash Resonance Arcade, and upload all our videos to YouTube. We do do some Let's Plays and bits and bobs. We don't do that many of them, but it's mainly about the show, um, and that's on. they're all uploaded to YouTube. We have also just signed up to Anook, Anook.com. So our Anook, Nook, is www.anook.com forward slash community forward slash resonance hyphen arcade not exactly the easiest thing to roll off the tongue so maybe that should be something the the, the address on the Anook uh, website if it is in fact even a public link I'm not sure you might have to be signed up to Anook for that um, and yes thank you very much we we'll, shall see you on Wednesday see you later see you later everyone see you bye bye